Super Mario Galaxy. Oh my god, Super Mario Galaxy. What a game. I remember when I first saw a commercial for it, I knew I needed a Wii more than anything. I didn't care about the Wii in the slightest, unlike a lot of people at the time, but when I saw that game, I was so blown away. I love Mario, I love space, combining the two just sounds like a match made in heaven. When I finally got it, it immediately became one of my favorite games ever. Nowadays, I still like it a lot, but it has too many small issues for me to love it as much as I did when I was a kid. But that's fine, because that's where the sequel comes in, because man, Galaxy 2 is so good, that is definitely one of the best games I've ever played. Unfortunately, I'm not talking about Super Mario Galaxy today, instead I'm talking about a Chinese ripoff called Dulu Doobie Star, released exclusively on PC in 2008 in China. China is in interesting place when it comes to video games. Their copyright laws were basically non-existent and consoles were banned there for the longest time. Nintendo struggled for decades getting anything at all out over there. It started with the Nintendo IQ, a console that was basically a digital-only plug-and-play N64. Unfortunately, that never took off and they ended up only ever seeing a very small portion of the library. Like, it didn't even get Majora's Mask. Like, what's the point in N64 without that game? They did eventually get a few Wii games in HD on the Nvidia Shield only a couple years ago, like Mario Kart Wii, Twilight Princess, and even Mario Galaxy. By the way, there's finally an official way to play these games in HD, and it's only available in China. That's a little infuriating to say the least. I mean, I'm happy for them, but I want it too. The Galaxy games look so good in HD, they basically look like modern games anyway. Consoles are finally no longer banned there, so they actually have the Switch, but due to their government being incredibly strict, they only have like three Mario games and that's literally it. Heck, up until recently, they only had new Super Mario Bros. U. I could not feel more sorry for them. Can you imagine the entire console only has one game and it's, and it's that one? The lack of stuff officially coming out over there ended up leading to tons and tons of piracy and tons of blame ripoffs too, like the game I'm talking about today, Dulu Doobie Star. Dulu Doobie himself is actually a mascot for a Chinese theme park, and this game was meant to advertise that, which is why there's a constant ad going on in the HUD. As for why a what I'd assume to be a massive company like that would steal from Nintendo, I don't know, I guess because China is very lax with this kind of stuff. I, I first discovered this game a long time ago, but I didn't know anything substantial about it until Digino you know Gaming uploaded a video on it. And that video inspired me to make this one, but before I start I should say that I normally like to have uh, game audio in the background in the, of these videos over music uh, for my own reasons, but for this video I am not going to do that because, well, I'll get into later. But that's not really an issue because that just means I have an excuse to put Super Mario Galaxy music in this video and, you know, that's a good thing, so yeah. Anyway, video time. Dulu Doobie Star's story is... I'm not sure. I mean, I see some stuff happening here that's probably important. I've heard this is Dulu Doobie's sister, so I would assume that's what she is. And she has red eyes in a few scenes for some reason. Uh, the game's in Chinese, so I don't know. I struggle to even get through the menus. You expect me to figure out what's happening here? I think the basic plot is Dulu Doobie's sister gets kidnapped and you have to save her, but I have no idea what else is happening here. I'm sure there's more. I can see it. I just couldn't tell you exactly what it is, so let's move on to the gameplay. As I've already gone over a few times, this is a 3D platformer, more specifically a Mario Galaxy clone. A pretty plain one, too. You platform a spherical objects in space, there's gravity mechanics, a ton of set pieces and mechanics are taken straight from Galaxy. Even launch stars, and you even collect stars, and this is definitely one of the most shameless clones I've ever seen. There are so many planets that got me legitimately laughing how bland some of this is. Anyone who's even slightly familiar with Galaxy will pick up on a lot of this. It doesn't even stop at stealing from Mario. Dulu Doobie himself has stolen voice clips from Klonoa. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to steal from. <laughs> and the music is stolen from various sources including Jeopardy and Ponyo. <laughs> yes, the Jeopardy theme is in this game and it doesn't even fit. It's not like they just needed a song. No, there was already another one there that's honestly a lot more fitting. They just decided to steal from Jeopardy for whatever reason. And yes, that is why this video doesn't have in-game audio. 
The game has 5 worlds, and each world has 10-15 to 15 stars while ending off on a boss. The stars are pretty similar to the ones you see in Mario, with the only difference being you have to collect all of them, making this game a lot more linear than any of the actual 3D Marios. Considering there's only 60 stars, I'm sorta of okay with this. Uh, where my problem actually stems from is how padded the stars are. Each world has about... 10 or so different planets to explore, and that sounds like a pretty okay number, right? Well, when you remember the star count can go up to 15, you realize it really isn't, so they end up forcing you to go through the same exact planets multiple times, which especially sucks when you have to go through a planet you hate, which happens a lot. Oh, but don't worry, to avoid making the game too tedious, they do change things up by having you collect 5 star pieces. <coughs> or even make you hit five switches in a certain order. That one just takes the already tedious starship objective and makes it even worse. There are so many of these in this game, more than half of the planets are just filled with switches and starships. Every star ends up just being a marathon of these objectives over and over, so all the stars just blend together after no time at all. If all of this wasn't bad enough, they like to make the game even more tedious by making planets that are just giant mazes. Sometimes they throw two of them in a row at you. Who thought spreading switches you have to hit in a specific order in a maze was anywhere close to fun? This was probably the most boring thing I've ever done in a video game, and they threw so many of these at me. The closest to tolerable these planets ever got was when you just can bounce off one of these enemies and get out of bounds and skip the whole thing, assuming the objective was just to get to the end, which it usually isn't. This game has a lot of random difficulty spikes. Basically, whenever the game decides to test your platforming abilities at all is when I start to struggle, mostly because the controls aren't very good. Okay, first off, this game doesn't have controller support, which is admittedly pretty understandable considering the game's circumstances, but this did lead to me using Joy to Key. The problem with doing this is I had to use my Xbox 360 controller, which is a good controller, but I had to use my D-pad because my analog stick wasn't working too well with no dead zone whatsoever. And the 360's D-pad is kind of garbage in case you somehow didn't know. Obviously, this isn't the game's fault, I just wanted to vent. What is the game's fault is just about everything else. First off, the movement speed is incredibly slow, making the already very tedious game design much worse. Then there's also the jump. It kind of feels similar to a lot of jumps you'd see in older platformers like Castlevania, in that you have like no control at all the moment you actually leave the ground, leading to deaths like this. Dulu Doobie also doesn't seem to like conveyor belts very much because of this. These conveyor belts give you way too much speed, causing way too many unfair deaths. Every time you jump, you kinda just have to hope for the best and pray you don't fly off the edge because that happens a lot. The camera is also pretty bad. There was a lot of leap of faiths in this game, and there was even a planet where I kept instinctively peering my head over my monitor, as if that would give me a better view. I knew this was dumb, but I, I couldn't stop doing it for some reason. The levels themselves are also stolen from Mario Galaxy. The first world is basically a combination of Good Egg Galaxy and Gusty Garden Galaxy, which while probably unintentional, is very similar to earlier builds of Mario Galaxy because those galaxies were originally supposed to be one. Actually, considering there's a planet that looks a lot like an unused planet from the same demo, maybe it is intentional? I'm probably thinking too deep into this. Anyway, the second one is pretty much Ghostly Galaxy, which also took some inspiration in some of these areas. It even has a very similar skybox. Oddly enough, this is a world that steals the opening planet from Good Egg. Yeah, that's weird. The third world is probably the most original because it has this metallic theme going for it, which isn't exclusive to Galaxy, but there is one planet that looked like Bowie Base, so uh, yeah. This one also had that stupid conveyor belt situation, the super tedious three-layer planet, and a lot of mazes, so it gets no brownie points for being sorta kinda original. The fourth world is a combination of Battle Rock Galaxy, Space Junk Galaxy, and a lot of really annoying ice physics. Oh my god, I hated that in this game. This one section is just a boring version of the most memorable part of Battle Rock, and I was having a lot of trouble with it at first until I realized it's much easier to just never move and only jump when you have to. They also brought back the three-layered planet because it was so good the first three times. I would say the last world is just Melty Molten Galaxy, but Mario Galaxy didn't invent the idea of a lava l Okay, never mind, this is definitely Melty Molten, oh my god. This level sucks, it obviously shares many of the same issues I've already complained about a ton, but it also ends off on one of the most unfair sections I've experienced in a 3D platformer. You're platforming off a volcano, 
and there's tons of molten rocks falling down with no warning that basically kill you in one shot. Oh, and there's this one really tight jump that I could barely make. I died here like 30 times, and that's far more than any other level in the game. This is such a massive difficulty spike, and I hate it. At least the game looks okay graphically. I mean, it looks like a Dreamcast game, but it's a Chinese-only PC game released for free, so I think it's fine. And the bosses are surprisingly passable, too. Honestly, these bosses are on par with a lot of bosses in most platformers, which isn't saying much, I know, but at this point, competency is surprisingly impressive. The first fight feels like a lot like if those spiny prana plant enemies from Mario Galaxy were turned into a full boss. And aside from the lack of polish, I can actually see this boss being a Mario Galaxy game. I'm not kidding. Again, it's not saying much because platformers in general tend to have eh bosses, but like still. Oh, and before I forget, please, please tell me I'm not the only one that thinks this looks like a Shadow of the Hedgehog emblem. Look at it! That's the Shadow of the Hedgehog emblem- why? The second one looks a lot like Camella from Deep Dark Galaxy, but the actual fight is pretty different. Uh, the third fight is this robot monkey thing, and he's actually kind of original. I mean, he's not, you just have to avoid attacks and knock his bombs back at him, which... Yeah, a lot of bosses are basically that. But the fact that I can't link this from anything to Galaxy impresses me, I guess. The fourth one is basically the same with different attacks, and it's now a football fish. <laughs> More like a soccer fish, yeah. Oh my god, I've been playing too much Animal Crossing. Again, these bosses aren't great or anything, they're only passable, but that's exactly how I would describe most bosses in platformers. Uh, though obviously, this still has a level of jank that's not present in most games. But whatever, the fact that you managed to make these fights at all comparable to standard fights within the genre is somewhat impressive to me. I guess this game just lowered my standards that much. And then there's the final boss. Does anyone care if I spoil this game? Probably not, but I'm gonna be safe. The final boss has three phases. The first one is just this octopus dude. Oh yeah, he's the main villain, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Anyway, he's in a mech and you're supposed to beat him by luring the not bullet bills into him, which I did just by walking in circles. The second phase is not a too bad platforming section, and the last phase is when you just have to avoid his tentacles while the fighting arena gets smaller with each hit. Again, not an amazing fight, but surprisingly competent. I like when bosses have multiple phases, and the idea of the fighting arena shrinking as you get further in the fight while not original is still something I like, so... Trying to find positives when I can, okay? Anyway, then you save your sister and I guess stuff probably happens, but again, Chinese don't know credits. Yeah, that was Dulu Doobie Star. Should you play it? No! It's far from the worst game I've ever played, but it's probably the most boring, and the occasional time it isn't boring, it's just frustrating. Trying this game is really not worth it, especially considering you have to jump through some hoops to even get this working like setting up a location emulator. I didn't even know what that was until I started working on this video. I still don't know what it is, to be honest. All I know is I had to set it to Japanese despite this being a Chinese game, I don't know what's up with that. This game is also like 6 hours long, which is admittedly a lot more than I thought it'd be, but that's also only because it's heavily padded like I said, so most of that playtime you're just going to be playing basically the same plants over and over, and that's honestly the main reason why I really don't recommend playing this game. Just watch videos on it, that's like the most you should do. I think the only thing you really get out of this game is just seeing how much of a blade and knockoff it is, and uh... You get that from watching any video on this, including this one. Uh, so, yeah, don't play it. Uh, I guess I'm done with this video now. Uh, see you guys next time when I review a childhood classic of mine. Bye.